Okay, so we're doing homogeneous equations of degree k. Basically what this means is if you have uh, f at x and y, and you take f at lambda x, lambda y, you can pull that lambda out and get lambda to the k times f at x and y. You got yourself a homogeneous equation of degree k. And that k can be positive, negative, zero, whatever you like. And how you would solve this is you want to take y equals vx and y prime equals derivative of that, of course, so v plus x v prime. Uh, if you have your equation in the form m dx plus n dy, you'll remember that from our uh, exact equations video. Same form, if you get it, say it's not exact, you'll check for homogeneous. And if it is, then your dy, y is still vx, I believe, yes it is. So y is vx, dy is going to be v dx plus x dv. And what you're going to do is substitute those in and simplify and you will the v's will disappear. You'll be left with your final solution. Alright, so let's do an example here. We're given y plus square root x squared plus y squared dx minus x dy equals zero. So we're going to do our first check for homogeneous. So we're end up with place every y with lambda y, replace every x with lambda x. We get lambda y plus the square root lambda squared x squared lambda squared y squared x minus lambda x dy equals zero. So here we already have lambda x. That's, we can't do anything with that. Here, these lambda squares can be factored out. So you'll get lambda squared times x squared plus y squared. We can bring that out of the square root. Uh, it's just lambda. And you can pull that out here. And it separates out. You get lambda times y plus square root of x squared plus y squared dx minus lambda x dy equals zero. So here we have homogeneous of degree one. So we can go ahead and solve this. I'm going to replace y with vx. So we get vx plus square root x squared plus v squared x squared all of that dx minus x remember dy is v dx plus x dv if you separate those out and get them in the right places you get v plus square root 1 plus v squared minus v dx equals x dv these of course will cancel out next uh, we're just going to flip these around so we get them in the right spots their respective integrands so you get integral dv over square root 1 plus v squared equals integral dx over x. And I'll just write that out again for you. So to integrate this one, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, v substitution with trig. We're going to set v equals to 10 theta dv secant squared theta 
d theta. So that leaves us with the integral secant squared theta d theta over square root 1 plus tan squared theta equals uh, the integral here, very simple, natural log of x plus an ordinary, I would just write plus c. Here I'm going to write natural log of c. So then we can simplify that to natural log of xc. It's just a little easier to write, a little prettier. Now we sub now we simplify this. Uh, you end up with integral of secant theta d theta equals natural log of xc. And if you look that up in your book, or if you're very good and you can remember that, that integral is natural log secant theta plus tan theta. Of course, natural log on both sides, the insides must be the same. Secant of theta plus tan theta equals xc. Uh, so this is your solution, but we have to get it back in terms of x and y. So we go back up here, our theta, tan theta is easy, that's just v. Secant theta, that's a little more difficult. Uh, so I'll just write it out here. Theta equals the arctan of v. So we're left with the secant of the arctan of v and probably already seen this, I'll show you anyways. I'm going to draw a triangle, that's theta. So the arctan of v equals theta, you're left with this, right? So arctan of theta equals v, that works out. And we're just going to use uh, Pythagoras here. This becomes 1 plus square root of 1 plus v squared. So now to get the secant of that, uh, it's just you just take the secant of this triangle, of theta, and you, so you end up with square root of 1 plus v squared plus v equals cx. And we go back up to the top here. Uh, where did I put that? You go back up to the top over here. We had y equals vx. So v equals y over x. I'm just going to sub that back in. You get the square root of 1 plus y squared over x squared plus y over x equals cx. And you can reduce that down simpler if you want. It's not really necessary, but that is your final answer. Uh, you can see these get pretty ugly pretty quickly. Uh, this is actually a fairly tame example. Good luck.